In the news this week, Shamima Begum lost her latest court challenge to regain a British passport. Some defenders have even gone so far as to say she contemplated suicide, to which the rest of us pointed out that, yeah, we knew that because she showed everybody the vest and the explosives on YouTube years ago. Roald Dahl was in the news after the publishing company played the oldest scam in a book by cancelling his original books, waiting for tens of thousands of them to fly off the shelf before reversing the decision. Although it would be a tragedy if words like stupid or dwarf are going to be banned, because I was looking forward to buying a new biography on John Berko. Joe Biden paid a surprise visit to the Ukraine, although given his ongoing cognitive decline, everything comes as a surprise to him these days. And Ed Sheeran released a hot sauce. Just be glad it's that and he's not released a new song. But of course, for now, the big news story is the race to become head of the SNP. And this last week saw three runners and riders. Kate Forbes, she's the current finance minister, although she's been attacked by many of Nicola's friends. A lot of it for being religious and opposing the worst machinations of the transgender movement. But there's also the policy they really dislike, which is her desire to have a major reshuffle after she wins, which would see lots of people lose out on their cushy £100,000 salaries and expense accounts. Can't be doing with that, after all. The favourite to get the job is Hamza Yousaf, who's also notable in being a perfect example of SNP hypocrisy at play. Forbes is being attacked for being a Christian, but Yousaf is a strict Muslim, so he's so far been given a free pass when it comes to these same issues. He actually skipped out in the debate in the vote in gay marriage because the mosque told him not to support it. But uh, look away, nothing to see here. And of course, to spice up the entertainment, there's Ash Reagan, whose main policy seems to be that she would just unilaterally declare Scottish independence without even bothering with a referendum, just like me self-declaring to be King of Mars or any of these candidates declaring that they'll win the next election. The idea of not holding a public vote on the issue is almost a childishly naive one, if it weren't one that was vaguely dangerous. It certainly doesn't have any detail about what would happen if a chunk of the country simply refused to go along with it and Union flags remained flying in Inverness or Shetland declared itself to be part of Norway, perhaps Aberdeen asking London to intervene and refusing to ship fuel south of Perth. On the other hand, perhaps the idea of not holding a vote is just a reflection that the SNP are finally maturing and realising that they're flogging a dead horse and that voters will never go for it. If we learn anything in the last 10 years, it's that politicians holding a binding referendum to rubber stamp something generally works about as well as trying to baptise a cat. Not sure where Kate Forbes stands on cat baptisms. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.